Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for what's seeming like the beginning of the end of the year. And I can't believe it's the last day of November. But thanks for joining. I hope you're having a, a great kind of holiday season. You had a great Thanksgiving and looking forward to the, the uh, holidays in December. So today's the last day of So Confident November project. That doesn't mean you can't watch it for the rest of your life and <laughs> however many times you want to, but it is the last day we're kind of talking about the Picasso top as this raw edged sweatshirt. This is the project. You can still sign up for the month project. You can sign up for the year, whatever, but this is the sweatshirt and it has all kinds of interesting raw edged features and raw edged patches that are stitched on, darts on the outside, hems that roll to the outside and I just I love this top and obviously people really liked it because we sold a lot of kits and have had a lot of um, interest in reaction. We did a Q&A last night as we always do every month for So Confident and one of the comments about this project from someone was she said I love the fact that I didn't have to be perfect. I didn't have to be so precise. So if you're interested in a really fun, fast project, something you could even make as a gift for a daughter, a granddaughter, or yourself, I like to make gifts for myself, um, have, a, have a look at this Picasso sweatshirt. We do have a few kits left. We have definitely blue, uh, kind of a light denim blue. But we also have not this particular pink, but for those of you who watched the video that I did and you received a couple of weeks ago, um, I used a different pink and it has one color of pink on the face of the fabric and a little deeper color on the reverse. It's definitely in this flavor of pink, but it's a little different fabric. And so if you're interested in us adding that as kits, just let us know. Give us a little shout out on Facebook Live and we'll, we'll add that as a kit option for the Picasso. So we're already beginning to talk about December's So Confident project. And we're making pants. We are making beautiful, liquid, slinky pants in fabric that moves, drapes beautifully. We're using a polyester and spandex crepe. So there's a little bit of a sponginess to it, a little bit of give. But you can see that it's just a beautiful, beautiful drape. And when you wear these, you feel special in them. I don't know, you just, you move differently. So we have lots of colors of kits. Of course, we have black and charcoal and Bordeaux. Those are uh, kits that we're gonna be ordering the fabric on Friday for those three colors. And we'll have the fabric in in about a week or so, so we'll get the kits right out. And then we have some other fun colors actually ready to go. Orchid, which is the ones that I made. I love this color. And electric blue is what Erin made. We have a mustard gold, we have red, we have a couple of teal, peacock blue colors. So please check that out. We are taking pre-orders and orders for the kits a little bit early. We started it yesterday, you can certainly do it today. And we're hoping that you'll get most of the orders in by Friday so we can order an appropriate amount of fabric to support the kits for the month. Uh, we're doing our, our class for no, uh, December a little bit differently. Normally I film a full length video with all the techniques of how to make the pants. Uh, we're using the Valencia pants pattern. I don't think I mentioned that. I, I'm using it because it doesn't have a side seam and that's fewer things to go wrong when you don't have a side seam. But at any rate, we're, on December 9th, we're doing a live Zoom class, fashion show, cocktail party, and all seven of us who work around here have made the pants, the Valencia pants, and we're gonna be modeling them. And everybody's shaped differently here. We have tall, shorter, wider, narrower, you know, all that. So you're gonna to get to see these pants on lots of different bodies, and really, I think it's gonna sell you on the benefits of this particular pants pattern, which has been around for us for a long, long time. It's just one of our great standards. So that's December 9th. It will be filmed. 
videotaped. And so you'll be able to watch it later if you can't join us at 4 o'clock Central Time on December 9th. And then on December 13th, we are launching So Confident 2022. And we have the entire year planned. The theme this year is pretty much wrapped around the idea of a wardrobe. So we're starting off with a jacket, then we'll move to a top, then pants, then a blouse, then a dress, and it goes on from there. So we'll be introducing that, and you'll see more of that as the month progresses. But mark your calendar for December 13th, because that's the first day to sign up for So Confident 2022. All right. I think I've told you all I need to know, you need to know about dates, which I can never remember, but I think I did okay. All right, um, so I've shown you the sweatshirt, I've shown you the Valencia pants, and now I want to introduce you to someone who you've yet to meet. So Amy, come on, come on over, come on down. <laughs> this is Amy Chapman, and Amy has been with us, what, a year? A little over. A little over a year. And you have saved our bacon. Did you know that? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Amy came on board. Amy has her own business. What's the name of your business? So Useful Studios. So Useful Studios. And tell us about what the, pr the products that you make and sell. So I make mostly uh, crafts. So um, the microwavable cotton bowl cozies, pot holders, tote bags, cosmetic bags, that sort of thing. And she is really in business. You're all over Etsy and Amazon and, e not eBay. eBay. eBay, craft shows. Facebook. Facebook. So um, we'll, she's a busy woman, but somehow finds time to come in here for a good portion of a week to help you all help us get your orders to you efficiently. And she's changed our systems of how we operate, changed our shipping systems, your computer genius, which we needed. So you've been a great addition. And um, Deb is the one who found you. Yes. Because you were a customer yes. at, at Hobby, Hobby Lobby, Lobby where she worked. <laughs> Every day. Every day. And so yeah. Deb, when we were sort of in crisis mode over a year ago, I said to Deb, boy, you know anybody? Well, I don't know this woman, but she was in Hobby Lobby every day and she was buying fabric. So she must sew. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Amy was, was um, good enough to come on board. So anyway, I just wanted to introduce you to everybody. But um, you, you sew, but you hadn't sewn clothes. Nope. Like ever or <laughs> never? My mom does, but I don't. Had his own clothes. Okay, so we're going to show, whoops, fell off the hanger here. We're going to show your first project, your very first project. So this is the Mix It top, and you added a band to it. Yes. You want to tell us why you added that band? It was slightly too short, and when I sewed it, I didn't measure it, and didn't, I don't know how, how to lengthen. So that was my solution to how to lengthen, well, just to add the band. It actually <laughs> is a great solution. I think it looks really good. But you have a sort of, you have a definite style to what you wear pretty much every day. Yes. Not every, you don't wear the same thing every day, but you wear a very it's similar, very you have a, a look. Mm -hmm. And it's some kind of a, a top, usually sleeveless. Yep. Because you're hot. Yes, all the time. All the time. <laughs> and you wear slim pants. Yep. And you wear flip-flops. Yes or some kind of sandal, even in the winter. Yes. We always think that's just <laughs> hilarious when the snow is out. You don't even put on shoes when it's snowing, do you? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And then you'll come in with a jacket every once in a while or some kind of a sweater or, or something. But pretty much that sweater's off as the day moves on and, and you are wearing this. Yep. All right. So this was your first one. I think you, for the first one, I think you actually did a fabulous job. But you did have trouble up here, didn't you? Yes. Because you had never put up neck binding on. No. So what happened here? Do you even remember? Because um, you made this a long time ago. I did make it a long time ago. I think what happened, I'm not really sure, but I know I didn't stretch it first. And so I made the neck band the same length as the neck. Right. And I can't, you can't do that. <laughs> right. There is this ratio of a neck binding. 
and we're working with Amy on some of these details, but a neck binding should be at least seven-eighths smaller than the original circumference. So if you're creating, for instance, this, this mix at top in the pattern is actually built for a woven fabric. And so when you're cutting a binding in woven, you want to cut it on the bias. And you may have done that because that's what the, fab the pattern said, but I can't quite tell actually in this knit. So you made it in a knit, which means you could have cut it on the cross grain, but it would have required that you measure the circumference of the neck opening and done a little math, which is no problem for you, uh, and made the neck binding smaller because it should lie flat and hug you. So we're, we're working with Amy on, on that. But I love the fact that you're really open to learning and trying to figure it out. And you were willing to go for it. You know, you'd never sewn. And, and you chose a knit. You know, a lot of people are really intimidated by knits. And you went for it. Yeah. So, great job. All right, so what do you have on? Do you even know? Uh, I put it on you today. <laughs> <laughs> the Anne's cardigan and the Anne's tank. That's right. So, she has on the Anne's cardigan, which is a typical look. A loose, drapey cardigan in kind of a knit or sweater knit or something like that. And then the tank that goes with it. And I think this, this is so you. So stand back a little bit so people can kind of see the whole thing and see how attractive that really is. So, Anne's cardigan and tank. Now, as a little side note, I don't know if you know this or not. So this is the Anne's tank with sleeves. And the sleeve of the cardigan fits in the tank. I don't know that everybody knows that. So not everybody wants a sleeveless garment. This happens to be a sweater knit that has sequins sewn on it. And it's also a sheer kind of mesh neck binding, but it's a good way to uh, have a different look for the Anne's tank. The Anne's tank can be long as a dress. As a matter of fact, our e-dress pattern, which is a long dress, comes from the Anne's tank. I don't know if you knew that either. Yeah. So, all right, so let's look at some clothes. So there's the Anne's tank. Let's put this on it. This is the e-shrug. Now, it looks similar to what you have on, but not only because it's red. <laughs> no, <laughs> but this, has, this is probably our easiest pattern. Have you ever made this? No. You should make this, because this is really fun. This only has, uh, well, two seams, basically. Shoulder seams, and of course, you insert a sleeve. But there's no back seam, there's no side seam, there's no seams any place, and all the edges are left raw because this particular sweater knit looks good left raw. So I think that looks good over the Anne's tank. So that's the e shrug, which is a download pattern. The story about this is uh, we were headed to a big show in Seattle. You may, I don't think you were around when we were doing big shows. Mm -mm. It was quite an effort around here. It's probably a good thing you weren't here. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, and we liked to go to the shows with a new pattern. And th this one particular year, we just didn't quite have the newest pattern. And so we did our very first download pattern because we didn't have time to print it. And this was the pattern. And it's been hugely successful. Long, short, short sleeve, no sleeves. We've made it a million ways. So E shrug. All right, so can you identify this one? Flat iron. Okay. Yeah. This is another one you should make. I did make that one. Did you make this one? Mm -hmm. What would you make it out of? Uh, it was uh, the boucle. Oh, the uh, rayon and yeah. wool boucle. Mm -hmm. Did you leave it raw edged? I did. Yeah? You like it? Yeah. It was one of my first. I might do it again. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, good. Well, this is a similar. Uh, to the e shrug, but this has more construction going on. It has shoulder seams and side seams, it has a pocket, it has a set in sleeve, but it has the same wonderful drape. Uh, it comes in a coat version and the shorter version like this. And I've put it over a, an Odette. 
Is that right? This is Odette, yes. <laughs> and this has some, here, you hold this a minute. This has some really interesting seams. This has a bus start at the side seam here, but then there is this princess seam here, so that is the equalizing bust fullness to the dart. And then this bottom peplum, I guess we'll call it. But this is how a binding, this is your goal, to create some shape. You know, we have this all over our tutorials on sewing with knits and uh, just, I think I've even demonstrated it on some of the So Confident videos. But this is everybody's goal, to have a neck binding that lies flat and is not coming out. So it takes practice, yes. which is, Amy, you're a fast sewer. Do you think that that, that for garments that you have to slow down a little 100%. bit more? 100%, yes. <laughs> She's kind of a, I call her a production sewer. She can whip out things craft-wise really fast. But for garments, I think you just need to step back and say, I don't need to make this for tonight. Right. I can make this over the course of a week. Well, my, I usually use a commercial sewing machine, so it goes 4,800 stitches a minute. And for, that's what I did that one out of. And I think for garments, I need to step back and use just a regular household machine. I think that's a good idea. Um, do you have a, a, a household machine? I have five of them. Five? <laughs> of course. <laughs> what a silly question. Yeah. Do you own a walking foot? I do, yes. All right. Yep. Um, you've got to use that. Yeah. And when you're working with knits, you're going to have to uh, use your polyester thread rather mm -hmm. than cotton, even though we're kind of cotton thread people here, polyester thread. And uh, have you uh, found your way to using FusiWeb yet? I've experimented with it. I haven't actually used it, but I've been told I need to. So. That's right. For those of you who don't know what FusiWeb is, it is a paper-covered line of glue. And basically, you apply it to the edge of a, of a fabric, like the hem, and you fuse it down, and then you remove the paper, and then you can fuse the hem in place so that when you top stitch it, your fabric doesn't crawl. It changes your life. Okay. Now, I'm not, just, I'm not overstating this. As a sewer, in my opinion, Fusey Web, it's right up there with a sewing machine <laughs> <laughs> in terms of, of need. So, <laughs> all right, so we have the flat iron, we have the E shrug, and we're pretty in love with this. Here, you can move over, you'll go that way. Yep. All right, so Deb brought this in. Do you like this? I love that. Would you wear this? Maybe without the turtleneck? Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. Now, this is a sweater knit. We're talking about sweater knits today. And this is a wonderful um, textured, kind of speckled sweater knit. And this is the, uh, excuse me, the Hudson top. Deb made this, and she used the pattern for the cowl. But if you're going to make it, you don't want that around your neck. It's not your thing. But you can use this pattern piece, and instead of cutting it this tall, you can cut it this tall and use it as that neck binding that you're going to uh, perfect. So you don't have to reinvent anything about the neck. Okay. You can just use this, and I'm going to show you how to put it on. But Deb said that one of the things that she had to do when making this was that she had to really do a lot of testing. Did you hear her talking about that yesterday? A little bit, yes. Yeah. Her serger didn't like it. Now, I didn't ask her what kind of serger she has or what the problem was, but she actually made a lot of test scraps and finally got the look that she wanted. So that's something that I tell people to do all the time is before you cut out even, take some of the corners of your fabric and do some tests because there have been some fabrics that I've passed on because I couldn't get the look. So this is one particular sweater knit that did not look good raw edged and she wanted to finish the edges. So she ended up getting a nice three thread uh, surged edge on the hem so that she could turn that up and top stitch. Now I asked her yesterday if she used FusiWeb and she said no and I 
I didn't know whether to scold her or not, but uh, she said no. She said she didn't have any trouble because she used a walking foot. And so her hem sewed in really well. I think that has to do with certain sewing machines. I know on my machine it wouldn't have done that. I, have, I would have had to have had uh, Fusy Web. But there's d different machines have, have different presser foot pressures. And you can change the presser foot pressure on your sewing machine and lift the presser foot up a little bit so it's not so buried in the fabric. Or you can, on, by contrast, screw it down and get it so it feeds a little bit easier. So I never touch that on a, my sewing machine, but that is something that's, that's recommended. But I think this is super, super cute. And just right on for this time of year, at least in Kansas, and we're all beginning to bundle up because it's getting pretty darn cold. And I'm headed to Cleveland tomorrow, and it's really cold in Cleveland. So this is the Hudson top. So Hudson, Anne's cardigan, flat iron, e shrug, and I have on the Picasso top, which I also like in a sweater knit. And I just made it just like the pattern. And then Erin, come around and show us what you have on. I have to speak for, yeah, we, we're both mic'd, so we have to speak for Erin. All right, so this is the, the uh, pearl jacket that you've lengthened. Do you yes. remember how many yes. inches? I don't, actually. A couple of inches, maybe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Did, and she lengthened it through the body here so that this seam uh, hit just kind of right below her waist, because normally that seam is up a little bit higher. So I'm pretty sure you lengthened it through the body of this. Yeah, but she's wearing it over one of the So Confident projects from this past year, the Peace Eureka top, but I love the combination. Now you also added a cuff, I did. which I think is a brilliant idea, because normally that sleeve on the pearl is just a straight sleeve, but with using the same fabric, add a band, and you left off the drawstring. There is a drawstring that you can put in the casing around the neck that draws it up, kind of ruches it, and changes the look totally. Mm -hmm. But right. that looks fantastic. With the, did you say the Eureka underneath it? I, yeah. I did, okay. but maybe okay. I didn't. Okay. Eureka, <laughs> Eureka top that's pieced, and that's a project that uh, you can sign up for mm -hmm. for So Confident. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. All right. OK. I guess you're excused. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything you want, any last minute uh, words of wisdom you want to tell us about? Uh, be patient, uh, you know. That's pretty much it. Pretty much it. Slow down. <laughs> Slow down. All right. Well, thanks. Yep. All right. Um, okay, so a lot of what I've talked about with sewing sweater knits is not very much different than sewing any knit. Polyester thread, walking foot, um, I use a 5.5 millimeter uh, throat plate. My machine came with a nine millimeter throat plate, which is really wide, and I don't want my fabrics to get sucked down into the throat plate, so I changed to a 5.5 millimeter, and I sew actually everything with that now. I own a single hole throat plate, but I rarely use it, only when I'm in serious trouble and things are not moving through the uh, sewing machine very well. Sometimes I have to use a little bit of paper, some stabilizing paper underneath to get things moving. Um, the fusy web is essential for me to uh, fuse the hems in place first before I stitch them. Uh, I don't lengthen the stitch. I, I actually shorten my stitch just a little bit. When I turn on my Bernina, the stitch length is 2.5 millimeter, and I dial it down to about a 2.4 millimeter. 2.3, 2.4. Uh, when you have a longer stitch, the machine has further to go and it's going to grab the fabric and bring it back and then you're going to get some puckers. So shorten those stitches. Long stitches are for clothes that we buy in the other places besides Nordstrom's. <laughs> but all of the techniques that I'm talking about and preach all the time are in my Sewing Knits from Fit to Finish book. And there's a whole chapter here just on types of seams to use for knits. And traditionally for the sweater knits, I'm going to use uh, the standard seam finish that we use for so many garments, which is to sew the seam with a straight stitch on the seam line, and then use a three-thread serger stitch 
to finish both at, to finish the edges together and then press the seam one direction. Now that's one of the things that uh, Deb told me yesterday when she was making the Hudson, that she had experimented um, and decided that she liked a little zigzag stitch for her seams, her side seams, because she wanted that extra little stretch. And that's no problem, but I, I rarely do it myself, but I think it's because I kind of forget. But if you want a garment that's really going to uh, have some stretch to it, I, I should ask her if she did it on the shoulder seams, because I probably wouldn't have done it there, because I would want to stabilize the shoulders. I might do it on the vertical seams only. But I should ask her that. I forgot to ask her that. Um, so uh, one of the things you do not want to use, this is my personal opinion, Every sewing machine company will disagree with me, but most sewing machines have a built-in knit stitch that's some kind of a zigzag slash back stitch thing. That is a nightmare. It may have the stretch that you want, but if by some chance you need to remove that stitch from something like a sweater knit, I think you might as well just give up it would be impossible to dig that stitch out of the loftiness of a fabric like this. So that's a stitch that if you walk into a sewing machine dealership and they say this machine has that stitch, don't be impressed by it. Just nod politely and say, oh, okay, fine. And hope that it come, your machine comes with a walking foot instead and a nice little zigzag. I use a straight stitch, but there are plenty of reasons to use a, a narrow zigzag stitch as well. So the right thread, the right needle. I use universal needles, but I own all the other needles, the ball points, the stretch needles, and all of that. If I'm getting uh, skip stitches or some kind of a hitch in my stitch, <laughs> hitch in my stitch, then I want to change needles. I might change needle types. I might change needle brands. I might change thread brand. I might change from Guterman to Mettler. You never know the combination of what works best for your fabrics. So don't get discouraged, but if you begin to really uh, change things, then you'll find the combination that works for your machine and your fabric on that day. I also, I love my new Bernina because it does tell me when I need to oil it. And the Sunday I was sewing and it wouldn't, it, it would sew, but it, it was right there on the screen. Here's where you oil it. And so I cleaned the machine. And you need to do that often, like every project. I don't always do that, but you're supposed to do that. And of course, you want to change your needle every project as well. It's not about the needle. It's about if a needle gets a little bit of a burr on it, which we can't feel or see, and it continues to go into the bobbin system of a sewing machine, it's going to alter the timing of a machine. And over time, that will, that will change how your machine behaves and ultimately needs some maintenance, which you know, we hope we never have to do on our machines other than lubricate them, oil them, and clean them out. All right, uh, so I'm going to show you some sweater knits. Although, do we have any questions about techniques or anything before we get into that? Um, there weren't, I haven't seen any on techniques, um, but they did want to know what kind of Bernina you have. I always forget which one I have. Um, I have a 760. Is there such a thing? <laughs> um, I don't have, well, I've had a lot of Berninas over the years. I mean, I've always traded up and traded for new and all that. Um, but currently I'm using at home the 7 Series and I really, really like it. Here at the studio I use a 5 Series, that I a 530, which I really like. Um, I need a machine that has the knee lever or lift system that lifts, raises and lowers the presser foot. I can't sew without that. Uh, I want good lighting, I want a big uh, base arm section so I have plenty of room to sew. I don't need every stitch on the planet, but I like having some stitches and I really want a good buttonhole. And so when I go into a dealership to, to look at a machine, I take my fabric, I take my silk, 
my organza, my lofty sweater knit, my velvet, whatever, and I sew on my fabrics, the kinds of fabrics that I use in the store. Every sewing machine looks really good on the cotton samples that they have at the dealerships, but you want to take the kinds of fabrics you're going to sew with. I think that's really important. And you want to have a good relationship with your dealership, whatever brand you use. You want, to, you want, to, they want, to know, you want them to know you on a first name basis. Not that you're in there for repairs all the time, but when you need help. I'll never forget, my famous story is, um, I was doing a class for Craftsy and filming in Denver, and I was leaving on a Monday morning. And I w it was a pretty tricky class, and I had my machine set to just a certain way so it would sew this one particular fabric. And it's 10 o'clock on Sunday night, I'm finishing up, and the whole system of needle bar, screws, everything just fell out of the machine. Well, I called my dealer at 10 o'clock on Sunday night, and she FaceTimed me and helped me fix that machine, and it took until midnight. That's a good dealer, so I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I do have a couple technique questions that I see yeah. here. Um, so how would the safety cover serger stitch work on a sweater knit? It is a chain stitch with a three thread overlock. Well, it should work fine. I've never used it on a sweater knit. I've only used it on uh, like cotton knits and it works great. So I think you would be fine. Um, that's one thing I didn't mention on the hem finishing of sweater knits. A cover stitch is a wonderful option and then you don't have to deal with those edges because obviously the uh, point of using a cover stitch is to also cover the raw edge on the inside. So you don't have to do that extra step of serging the edge first and then top stitching. So cover stitching is I would only do uh, three thread, not four, or two thread, not three, but um, cover stitching is a great option. But I haven't ever used that particular stitch, but I think it's definitely worth a try. If you don't have a serger, what alternate finishing would you use on a sweater knit? Uh, first of all, I would see how well, how good it looks without a finish at all. Then, what would I do? I think I'd go to my local dealership and buy a serger. Um, but, uh, that's a smart, smart alecky answer. Um, I think it really depends on your knit. You could try a zigzag. I'm not a big fan of that. If you've got a sweater knit that's really raveling, uh, you may not, you may not want to do that. You may end up zigzag stitching the whole seam not just the edges. Try that with a real wide zigzag. So you're still encasing the seam in some way. Um, would you use a straight stitch around the neck? I do use a straight stitch around the neck because I want that to stay pretty stable. Uh, can you add a cowl neck to the Picasso? Absolutely. This Hudson type neck on a Picasso would be great. See it now this in reverse, you know, I talked about how this could become a, a shorter piece and become your binding on this. The binding piece on the Picasso could be widened and become the cowl. Uh, do you have raw edges on your Picasso? Talk. No, I don't. I have serged edges. I three thread serge the edges and then, well, the seams are stitched and then three thread serged and pressed one direction. The hems are serged and turned and top stitched. So you didn't do the overlapping seams? No, like I did not do the over. I, the this pattern. is a traditional construction mm -hmm. of the Picasso. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. In the Picasso pattern, we have um, two options, an overlapping seam option and a traditional seam option and I did the traditional method on this. Okay, um, can you kind of describe the color of the, the Hudson top? I, I think this is a brick color. Mm -hmm. Would you call this brick? I'd say so. It is, it's showing up more, um, more yellow on the screen, at least on mine, uh, so I can see why they asked that question. Yeah, this it's... is a nice uh, earthen brick color, mm -hmm. burnt brick. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not really yellow rich. at all. Mm -mm. No, it's, it's in the red-orange family. On the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. 
Uh, you were talking about the Anne's cardigan and the dress, um, like the e-dress. So I think this relates to that. So then the dress has the Anne's cardigan arms eye and you can make the dress with long sleeves. So I guess, can you use the Anne's cardigan sleeve on the e-dress to make Absolutely. long sleeves? Yes, the e-dress starts with the Anne's tank. So it has the same neckline and same arms eye as the tank. So you can use the sleeve from the Anne's cardigan in the Anne's tank and then, it and then that became the e-dress. So the top of the e-dress is basically an Anne's tank. What serger do you use? I have several. Um, <laughs> I'm like mm -hmm. Amy. Um, <laughs> but the one? one I use at home <laughs> is the brand new Bernina. Is it the 890? Is that the number? I used to be better with these numbers, but it's the newest, newest combo serger that does both overlocking and cover stitching, and I'm crazy about it. It's powerful. I mean, it is powerful. Way. Well, that was an interesting thing. Uh, the project that we're doing for January has rolled edges mm -hmm. as the finish. And up here in our studio, Aaron was working on a different serger. We also have one of the new ones. And she was attempting to do a rolled hem on an older serger, and it just didn't look right. And so she put it on that. It, actually, what was happening was when you were trying to cross seams is where it hung up. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. it, the roll hem was fine. It was the transitioning from mm -hmm. through thickness. Right. Yeah. So you put it on that uh, newer machine, and it, it just went right through it. It was amazing. Yeah. I was sold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bernina worked on that for years. It finally, finally happened. <laughs> If you're using a zigzag stitch for the seams, what width and length is the stitch? I knew somebody was going to ask me that. Uh, the numbers are, have, are eluding me, but um, let me see. It's like a... Right here. We have a 0.5 millimeter width and a 2.5 millimeter length. I've always had trouble finishing in the round on a cover stitch. Help. Oh, well, I, I hear you. Um, first of all, practice, 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 practice. But I will uh, come across the beginning of the stitches by about a half an inch. And then I bring the flywheel forward so that the needle is completely down. And then I raise it so it's completely up lift the presser foot, and then with a little tool, I will pull out under the presser foot the two top threads, or three if you're using three, and clip the loop, and then hold on to the fabric and pull it out so that nothing ravels out. And then I take a needle and I, with a large eye, and I thread each thread from the top side, take it to the back side, knot it, and tie it off. Um, we'll just save this one more and then you can go into the fabric. So um, do you have trouble switching your um, machine from the overlock to the cover stitch? No, it's about the easiest that I've ever had. I've had a few, a couple of combo machines and this is definitely the easiest one. Okay, let's, okay, let's look fabrics. at some fabrics. All right, so these are sweat, all sweater knits, various fibers. Um, the fabric that Deb made hers out of we have in four colors. We have a black that has kind of a coral color and some gray. You could almost call it mint green in there, but it's a wonderful little speckle. We have this beautiful evergreen that has some rust and light green in it. We have navy that also has a little bit of a pink tone speckled through it with a lighter blue. We have the auburn color. So those are the four that are um, like Debs. I was going to tell you the content. 
and I'm not going to tell you the content. There's some polyester in it. I can look it up if you really need to. Okay. Uh, so then the one that uh, Aaron has on, these are hanging on the wall, unfortunately, wrong side out. And what's interesting about these, the gray and the navy and the teal, is that there is a, an overprint on the right side that creates this modeled look. You may not be able to pick that up on Facebook here, but there's, it creates a texture. So the ground is a, is a very natural, just normal uh, jersey knit, and, but then it has this overprint on it. These are super drapey and super soft, as you can see in the pearl jacket that Erin is wearing. Really luscious, just beautiful. And then we have a couple of heathered ones. I love this, this green one. This is polyester and rayon and spandex. And it, this looks like just the most elegant Eileen Fisher sweater you've ever seen in your life that you're going to spend $650 on, but not the fabric. And then the other color of that is down here, right here in this aubergine color, kind of purple, kind of grayed, but definitely heathered. Why don't you just go, if it has a tag, could you go ahead and say what the content is? Sure. 87% uh, polyester, 10% rayon, 3% spandex. Some of these have spandex, other ones do not. All right, so then we have this one, which is uh, bamboo and cotton, super soft in this fantastic eggplant color. But all of these are lightweight. We're talking about lightweight sweater knits here today, not the heavy ones, and, but super soft, no heather. This has a sort of flannel look to it in terms of the texture. This one is very special. We get this from Belgium, and this has several colors of yarn construction from aqua, a pink tone, a purple tone, and we pulled out this rib knit with the idea that this would make a great combination. This also has a sort of zigzag uh, weave to it as well. It's really, really incredible. So this would make a gorgeous pearl or anything, really, uh, with the uh, ribbing. And we think that this ribbing works with a lot of other things as well. Then we have something that looks somewhat like this one. Don't have this exact fabric. But this flat iron in this gray texture would be really pretty. Now you're seeing these vertical, so obviously this would have a little more of a horizontal motif to it, but it's barely a pattern but a tone on tone. But again, super drapey. This one is 95% polyester, 5% spandex. And this one, I believe, is the same as this one. Cotton and... Make sure here. Yeah, bamboo and cotton. So these two are not heavy at all, but super drapey in this kind of light copper color. So I think that's it, right? Did I touch all of them? Yeah. Yes. What's the fiber content on the Belgium? Purple? The Belgium one, yeah, that one. Um, is 55 percent polyester, 45 percent cotton. Do you think the polyester would pill? You know, uh, that's a really good question, and I don't know the answer to that. I've had polyesters that pill and polyesters that don't. I've had bamboos that pill and bamboos that don't. And unfortunately, I can't tell you if any of these are going to pill. <laughs> I would hope fine. not. The one you have on, it's, it's not pilling, is mm -hmm. it? No. And you've worn that. So these three, and these are polyester, I believe. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, this is tensile and lyocell and cotton. Yeah. So these are rayon and cottons. Tencel and lyocell are 
different generations of rayon, Lysel being the newer than Tencel. So these have a totally different... Uh, I know that the, we see so much more polyester in these sweater knits because of the stability and the recovery. These aren't going to bag out. They're going to stay the same as they started, and they're going to wash well and hold up well. The pilling, oh, I wish I could be clear with you about that, but I can't. Would the eggplant bamboo work for the Valencia pants? This does not have spandex in it. For the Valencia pants? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, Well, I don't know why not. It has good recovery. Makes me think there is some spandex in there and our label doesn't have it. But yeah, I think that'd be pretty. Does the knitbook have the same content as your Craftsy classes? Yes. The, cra the book, um, I have two Craftsy classes. One, I think just sewing with knits, which is divided by technique. My second knits class, called the Ultimate Sewing with Knits class, is divided by types of knits. And we go from tissue weight all through the different weights up to really heavy weight and different techniques that go along with those weights. All of that is in here. What this has is a lot about fitting that the, neither of the Craftsy classes have. And there's things in here about lingerie, and elastics, active wear, some embellishments. So there's more, but basically what the classes have in terms of techniques would also be in here. There's a question about the Valencia pants. Is there a way to add a pocket? Oh, you know, that came up last night and we forgot to answer that. Uh, is there a way to add the, a pocket to the Val Valencia pants? Well, the answer is yes. Um, I would do one of two things. You can either, either have a single welt pocket placed wherever. That would be the most beautiful. But I've also seen a technique where you create a dart at the what would be the side seam. There is no side seam, you know, so you can't have a side seam pocket. But you can create a dart on a side and put a pocket in the slit of the dart. Um, can you compare the Knits book <clears throat> to the tutorial that's on sale? Oh, the tutorial is, um, has everything about the tools that I've talked about, and it talks about applying a knit binding. We're going to get you that tutorial, Amy. Uh, the ready-to-wear binding, um, again, but the tutorial doesn't have anything to do with fitting doesn't have much to do with the uh, categories of knits. There's a lot of information at the beginning of this about general characteristics of all the categories of knits. So again, this is more comprehensive, but that tutorial is, it's got a lot in there. Um, is the knits book on sale this week? No, the knits book is not on sale. Unfortunately, as an author, I don't get any breaks on this. So, um, Sorry, you get my name if you order it. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can autograph it for you. <laughs> okay. Um, should we? Sorry, potential spam. Okay. Um, I think I'll go through and show the fabrics up close. There was okay. a question about the, um, the gray one up top. All right. Let's see if we can get a... So, see if I can get closer. Oh, you can see the texture a little bit better now. Okay, what about the blue? Okay. And there was a question whether if the peacock I'm wearing is online. We don't have a lot of it, so I'm wondering if um, oh. Deb took it off already. Oh, I don't know. So, just have to assess our stock. Yeah, maybe. I'm just going to go through and pan so you can see all the fabrics. I'm gonna bring this one forward because it's kind of far off to the side and I think it's so beautiful. Okay. 
Okay. And do you want to go through all the patterns again? All the, right. All so garments? here's what's on sale this week. We have all the fabrics that we've talked about. We have the Anne's cardigan and tank, a printed pattern, the flat iron jacket and coat, printed and digital, mm -hmm. the uh, pearl and opal printed, the e shrug is digital, the Hudson, here's how you have to be careful. To get the top and the pants, you have to order the printed pattern. If you order the digital Hudson, it's the pants only. So don't be confused by that. So to get the top, it's the printed version. And then the, so those are the patterns. And then the tutorial that's on sale is Sewing Fashion Knits. And it's like 60 pages of pretty comprehensive information. Okay. okay. All right. Is that it? I don't see any other questions. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you next Tuesday.